welcome to worship with Second Baptist today. I'm Brittany Stillwell, the associate pastor with students and families, and I'm so glad that you are here to worship today. Whether you're here, which the youth were just telling me that you all get extra gold stars in your crown because apparently the game's a little closer than we thought, or something along those lines. I don't really follow Arkansas football, but thanks for being here. You get extra stars in your crown. Or maybe you're worshiping with us online. Hopefully you don't have the two stream thing going on, but that's just like half a star in your crown, I think. Um, or maybe you're tuning in with us tomorrow morning at your regular time. We're glad that whenever you are or wherever you are that you are worshiping with us today. If you're visiting with us, we would love to know more about you. There's a visitor card in the pew in front of you. If you would fill that out and put it in the offering plate at the back, we would really love that. There's also a visitor's card online that you could click on and just let us know that you're here. We'd love to know that you were with us and to reach out to you, but we promise we won't hound you. So next Sunday is the beginning of Advent. And y'all, I don't know where the time went. How, how is it Advent already? And I think I say that every year, but this year still feels different. How is Thanksgiving less than a week away? Where did it go? And yet, if I think back to Fall Fest, which was only three weeks ago, that feels like forever ago. Time is weird, isn't it? And I think sometimes we think of time in a line. It has a beginning and an ending. But then sometimes our endings become our beginnings. And sometimes the part that was once a beginning is also like an ending. And the part that's an ending is also like a beginning. I think the early church knew this. And so they took that beginning that was like an ending and that ending that was like a beginning and they tied them together like this. And they called it the circle of the Christian year. Today we find ourselves in a special place, right here at this knot. It's a place that often gets overlooked, but it's a very special Sunday, and it hangs out right here by our knot on the stream. It's the day when the beginning that's like an ending touches the ending that's like a beginning. It's called Christ the King Sunday. Maybe it could also be called God's dream comes true Sunday. On this special Sunday, we remember that all of the stories and mysteries that make up our Bible and our faith are part of one big story. And we remember that all of this story, every last bit, is about God's dream coming true in fits and spurts, in our hearts and in our minds, and in our world. But what is God's dream? God's dream is that we would love God and love each other and even love ourselves. It sounds easy, but it's also hard. You see, the Creator, God the Father and Mother, made us in the very image of God. And the Redeemer, Jesus, showed us how to love each other. And the Sustainer, the Holy Spirit, helps us to know what to do and who to be. And together, we work to make God's dream come true. Some days, it seems like we are just almost there. And some days, it feels like God's dream is very far away. But on this day, the day we celebrate the reign of Christ, we remember that God's dream will come true. We remember that it is coming true and that we can be a part of that work. It's an ending that's like a beginning and a beginning that's like an ending in our circle, even when we're right in the middle of it already, but not yet. And so today, 
let's fix our eyes and our hearts on the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. May our hearts cry out with the psalmist. The earth is the Lord's and all that's in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Good evening, it's gonna be a wonderful day, evening of worship in this space. Will you please stand as we sing together?
some of the bounty that was purchased for the Darman family, the family of 10, that's really loud, isn't it? <laughs> the family of 10 we're helping to resettle here in Arkansas. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we posted on our Facebook page a list of new household items that this family would be needing. And this post was shared multiple times, reaching well beyond the scope of Second Baptist Church. Um, and every item had been bought within five days, a value of several, several thousand dollars. Thanks be to God for these indescribable gifts of generosity and love. Thank you to everyone who posted it, reposted it, and who purchased these items. May God bless these gifts and the Darmon family as they adjust to life here in Arkansas. Will you join me now in a thanksgiving prayer? Holy, loving Creator, eternal Christ, breath and spirit of life, I stand here humbled by the privilege and the responsibility to offer you on behalf of this gathering of your children a prayer of gratitude. Hear us as we join our hearts in thanksgiving. For the profound joy of being in this place, to worship together again, we thank you. For this team of precious ministers who have led us through a long, dark valley with unwavering wisdom, courage, and love, we thank you. Even for the valley itself, because passing through loss, suffering, isolation, loneliness, and fear, we have seen with new clarity how deep and steadfast is your love for us. And we thank you for each other, families, singles, all colors, all ages, old and young, and in between, and for the love among us that cheers, uplifts, encourages, and heals. We thank you for music and sermons and words of wisdom and the bread and wine, for all the ways we have of praising you. We thank you for opportunities to pass on the love of Christ by loving our neighbors. We thank you for your infinite, unfathomable love for your creation. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Amen. Hang around Second Baptist long enough, and you're sure to hear us talk about Helena and Phillips County and the work that we're doing there. I want to share a brief word about how that was born so that other folks can tell us tonight what's happening right now. Twenty plus years ago, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship with which we identify began an initiative to work in the 20 poorest counties in the United States. When I imagine what those counties might be, I tend to think, urban counties, in inner city counties, but that is not the pinnacle of poverty in this country. Real poverty in this country is rural poverty. And so that became a rural poverty initiative. And CBF has been invested in those 20 counties, or at least most of them, for 20 plus years. For us in Little Rock, because we're in Arkansas, we chose Phillips County and Helena where we have been working for 20 plus years to provide a presence on the ground. Uh, we host an all-church challenge every summer in Helena where congregations all over the country, uh, and that's not much of a stretch, it is North Carolina to Texas and all parts in between, congregations descend upon Helena and love and teach and shape children and youth. Uh, they teach them how to swim. They teach them physical skills, but more so leadership skills and character development. We have renovated and built homes so that the infrastructure of that town is different. The physical infrastructure of that town is different because of our work there. So that's what we've been doing for 20 plus years in 20 counties. But, there are 301 counties in our country that struggle with persistent rural poverty. What that means is really three criteria. It's 
It's a population of less than 50,000 in that county. And over 20% of that county has been below the poverty line for at least 30 years. I want you to think about that. Over 20% of that county has been in poverty for at least 30 years. 16 of those 301 counties are in our state. So, Together for Hope has been working hard to expand their capacity to make a difference not just in 20, but in 301 counties. And you can imagine the scale of that growth. There are basically five ethnogeographies, they call them, uh, sort of clusters of counties. They are in the Cotton Belt of Alabama, Appalachia, the Rio Grande Valley, native lands in the west and northwest, and the Mississippi Delta on both sides. Each of those ethnogeographies has a vice president that oversees them, uh, or we hope to have a vice president that oversees them. And two of those people are in the room tonight. Keith Stilwell, will you raise your hand? Keith works as the vice president over the Appalachian region uh, and does great work there. Though in this church, he will primarily be known as Brittany's dad. Keith, we're glad that you're here and we appreciate your work and you. And L. Nicole Stringfellow is here with us tonight and I'm about to let her take the mic and take off. She oversees the Delta region and our region, which is why we want to hear from her tonight. Before coming to Together for Hope, she had a 19-year career at Delta State University, where as part of her work there, she was the regional director of the AmeriCorps VISTA program. She has a BA in criminal justice from Mississippi Valley State, a master's in criminal justice from Delta State, and a master's in human capital development from Southern Miss. I'm going to start saying that's what churches are about, is human capital development. I like that. She's also doing incredible work in our part of the world, y'all, and we're honored to have you tonight. Preaching tonight is my friend Dr. Jason Coker. He's the National Director of Together for Hope, so he oversees all of this. He also currently serves as the coordinator of CBF of Mississippi, so you might think of him as the Ray Higgins in Mississippi. He is a native of Shaw, Mississippi, which is in the north part of the state and the Delta. He received a Master's of Divinity from Yale University several years ago and pastored in Connecticut for the better part of two decades. Uh, he received a Ph.D. from G Drew University and has written numerous articles and books. But that's not what I think of when I think of Jason. I think of someone who cares when I think of Jason. Someone who has not forgotten his roots. Someone who dreams big dreams, who dreams in league with God, as one writer might say. And for whom the head and the heart have wed in a pretty beautiful way to do this work. Jason, we're most grateful for your work professionally, and I'm most grateful for your work personally and for your friendship. You've inspired me and challenged me and encouraged me, and I'm grateful for that. He's here tonight with his wife Pam and their three kids, Liam, Owen, and Raina. We're glad that y'all are here too. Y'all, this is the work that we participate in every time the plates are passed your way. This is the kind of work that you are doing. And it goes all the way to Helena and to the Rio Grande and to Native Lands and on and on and on. Thank you for that. And thank you all for being with us tonight. El Nicole, tell us what's happening in the Delta. Yes, she does not want to come to the pulpit tonight but I'm making her. <laughs> and also, let me say this about Jason. He was on me. You've never had me to Second Baptist on a Sunday morning. And I said, what about this weekend? And we put it on the calendar. So don't think he didn't give me a hard time when I called him and said, hey man, the marathon is Sunday morning. We bumped you to Saturday night. So he still hasn't been here on a Sunday morning. But I'm glad you're here. El Nicole, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Okay, there is a reason 
why I ask not to come to the pool pit because I've been running. So I want to speak from the floor and he told me no, so I respect the man of the house and we can argue about it later. So thank you, I, I am happy to be here today. I told Brittany, Brittany I'm going to wear yellow because my name is Sister Sunshine, S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E, and Jason is Rain, R-E-I-G-N, Sunshine and Rain, and we come as a team. So, because we are going to reign with Transforming Rural America, just remember I'm Sister Sunshine, he's Rain, okay? <laughs> All right, it's to, I want to just bring us up to speed. Together for Hope Delta, we are the Delta region. If the Mississippi River runs through it, it's usually in my territory. There are seven states that the Mississippi River runs through. So I have the largest area, 87 counties, and depending on what the census and the redistricting and the remapping, it may grow. We don't want it to grow, but there's a grand possibility the area will grow because more counties are being added as considered as rural poverty. So having the largest region, we're going to talk about Arkansas. There are several states, but we're going to talk about Arkansas because that's where we are. In 2019, when I started, we had one organization that's Together for Hope Arkansas located in Helena, West Helena, and that's the All Church Challenge, what you all are familiar with. I am happy to say since 2019, we have grown. We now have six organizations that is a part of Together for Hope. You hear the name Together for Hope Arkansas because it's located in Arkansas, but we are national and we do not discredit. We support and we also come in and build and provide capacity. We have Impact Camden in Camden, Arkansas. We have Delta Circles that has come on board in Helena, West Helena. We have, have Tri-County Rural Health Network in Helena, West Helena. We just picked up the city, I must remember she says city, city of Hermitage, Arkansas. And we also were waiting on a transitional housing unit to sign the agreement and they are in Nevada County. So we have expanded and we are excited about this expansion. What we do with Together for Hope Delta, Angela and I, Angela Carson, she is the assistant to the vice president, but I say she's bigger me because she has more skills than I do. Angela and I work with all of our coalition members individually and collectively, and our goal is to strengthen the capacity of the city, small town, and the organizations, because we're now shifting our attention. Federal funds, other funds are being redirected back to urban areas, but we've got to put our focus back into rural America, and we must strengthen the organizations. Because yes, some organizations continue to get the same funding, but we need our on the ground that are in the heart of the communities that have the direct, direct connection to the communities. We need those organizations strengthened and we want them to be powerhouses so that now we can start having funding and resources to come directly to those organizations. However, in the meantime, Together for Hope stands in the gap between those that support and those that we're working with so that they can st strengthen. So we build capacity in our small towns, or I'm sorry, cities in our communities, our towns, our cities, we're doing ABCD sessions that's asset-based community development. We're helping them to see the assets in their town or in their city, and let's build and go from there, especially for economic development. I'm very proud to have Hermitage Arkansas on board, especially when I found out they have a tomato festival that in that area and a portion of that festival comes through Hermitage. So I said I wanted to be one of the first to ride in the first parade and I want to throw tomatoes and I want the wrist pin cushions from the old school days. Anything that look like, act like can be used for a tomato, buy a tomato with a tomato. I want to be on the forefront of this, but that is economic development. And that's bringing back some of the things that many of us, of us in the room Came to, came to love and know, I would say it that way. We're also working with a small town in 
Mississippi side in Mississippi population is 200 and something. So as we're doing this work and bringing more to the table, we are transforming rural communities. We want to bring side and we want to bring a new home to side in Mississippi. We want to also turn a block into a new housing block in Bell Zone of Mississippi. So between Hermitage, I'm sure we're going to get into some things in Hermitage pertaining to housing, but food security is one of the main priorities in Hermitage. So we're, uh, we have four priorities of hope, and we now have a coalition that reflects the four priorities of hope. We also want to see in Hermitage and some of our other areas, what are some of the social enterprise opportunities that can take place and that will flourish from some of the things that we do. I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but this is how I can see Second Baptist being involved with us. You're already involved, but we also want you to help us light the flame in rural America. We're transforming. We want you to light the flame in rural America. We're looking at having our first annual Together for Hope Delta Regional Summit. The team said they wanted in March 2022. We're looking for a place to host. If it's not here, we want it to be somewhere, but we want everyone to come together. Our coalition members, our supporting churches, possible supporting churches, networks, partnerships, and possible funders to join us, and we're all in this space together for two days. So we really can sit together and look at how we can change rural America, how together. We also looking at having other capacity building sessions. I had to do a capacity building training session this morning on communication strategies. We're also working with them on their social media. We're working with them on their financial stability. We're also working with them on developing their board or strengthening their board. We're working on the core items with these organizations and in our towns and communities. So you have been with us. We ask you to stay with us, stick with us, especially during our growth and stability time. As I said, we're Together for Hope. We are transforming rural America, and we want you to be a part of lighting the flame because we want America to know that we are spreading love and we're igniting hope. Just remember that. Okay. Thank you.
The scripture reading is from John chapter 18, 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you said that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together for Hope is transforming rural America. This past year, at just one of our hot sites, Delta Hands for Hope in Shaw, Mississippi, we were able to feed over 500 families every month in four different towns. Take a moment to wrap your head around 500 families. Those family food boxes are meant to feed a family of four. 500 families would fill this beautiful sanctuary to capacity about four times over, and then have a line wrapping around the block. Those family food boxes weighed 20 pounds a piece. Mm. Since COVID 20 months ago, Delta Hands for Hope has distributed 200,000 pounds of food. That's 100 tons. To enough families that would break code in this sanctuary every month in one of the most economically depressed areas in America. And Delta Hands for Hope is just one of our sites, one of our Together for Hope sites. And now, today, we have over 50 Together for Hope sites across rural America. That's transformation. Now, I've helped unload some of those boxes uh, in my hometown of Shaw, Mississippi. Uh, And Linda can bear testimony. She was with me. I'm not lying to you. But we don't have loading docks at uh, Delta Hands for Oaks, so we have to manually unload every one of those trucks that comes in. And that's not easy if you remember how much those things weigh. But we would unload all that food, get it down into the center put it in the building, and then the cars would start to arrive. And cars would line up down the road, and then line up around several city blocks, and we'd start distributing that food. And what I noticed is we would hand that family food box to the car, that most of those cars were driven by grandparents. And most of those grandparents had their grandbabies in the back seat. This shouldn't surprise us. 
Because poverty and hunger affect children the most in the United States of America. And then the next most devastated age group are senior adults. Children and grandparents are the hungriest and poorest people in the United States of America. So when we think of the poor, when you think of the poor, I want you to think about senior adults, and I want you to think about our babies. And I want you to think about what kind of commentary that is on our country. This food is sustaining, this food is transforming lives. Now this year, Together for Hope turns 20, and we started running the numbers. What does it look like? What kind of 20 years of impact, what does that look like? And here's a number for you. Together for Hope has provided over 500,000 tons of food to families in rural America. 500,000 tons. And if you're wondering what 500,000 tons might look like, I'd ask that you remember the World Trade Centers in Lower Manhattan. Remember the Twin Towers? One of those Twin Towers weighs approximately 500,000 tons. So visualize food boxes stacked up 122 stories high and a full city block in one of the greatest cities on earth. But just in the past 20 months, at just one of our sites, Delta Hands for Hope, we fed over 500 families a month in four different towns in the Mississippi Delta. And this is just one way Together for Hope is transforming rural America. But transforming rural America is one thing. Transforming Arkansas is a different one, right? I mean, this is where we are. Besides our North Star in Helena, West Helena, Together for Hope, Arkansas, You've already heard what El Nicole Stringfellow, the Vice President of the Delta Region, you hear what she's doing. She's recorded, uh, recruited at least four other organizations in the Arkansas Delta who are already doing important work among our four priorities of hope, education, health and nutrition, housing and environment, and social enterprise. The city of Hermitage, Arkansas, has joined the coalition. Impact Camden in Camden, Arkansas, has joined the coalition. Tri-County Rural Health and Delta Circles, both in Helena, West Helena, have joined the coalition. And all of them have been doing transformative work for years. Now we get to do it together with them. And we're already waiting on another MOU, uh, another MOU Memorandum of Understanding. That's inside language, I'm sorry. We're waiting on another organization to join us in Prescott, Arkansas. You guys might know where that is. We'll come alongside these towns and these organizations and we'll help build their capacity. We'll help resource their mission and we'll help transform their towns. I'll never forget the first time I went to Helena, West Helena, Arkansas. First time I laid eyes on that mobile library there in Together for Hope, Arkansas. You guys know that bus. Our bus was a beacon of hope. I heard stories of how they would drive up in the neighborhood and have reading laboratories. How kids would come out and come into that bus and read. Those readers transformed into volunteers and participants that eventually transformed into college students that finally transformed into professionals. One of those kids who got involved when he was about 13 or 14 years old, he came every time Cat and Molly, you guys remember Cat and Molly, that was his, that was his period. Every time they would open the doors, every time they had a program, every trip, every group that came, every opportunity to travel, Ira Neely was there. When he graduated high school, Molly grabbed him and drove him to Memphis to the airport and he got on a plane and he flew to Washington, D.C. And he was one of our Cooperative Baptist Fellowship student got go student interns that summer at National Memorial Baptist Church where Casey Jones was then our pastor. Ira served as a CBF summer missionary basically that summer. And when he came home, 
Molly was there at the airport and picked him up. And she drove him straight to Clarksdale, Mississippi and dropped him off at Cahoma Junior College where he started his freshman year at college. Today, Ira lives in Richmond, Virginia, where he's been helping and working at First Baptist Church of Richmond with their virtual learning center during the pandemic. First Baptist Richmond, they met Ira when he was a little boy because they used to come to the All Church Challenge there in Helena, West Helena. I asked Ira, I said, uh, what would you say if someone asked you what Together for Hope means to you? Quote, Together for Hope is like the COVID-19 vaccination. It helped me live. It helped me get through growing up. It gave me the opportunity to see the outs what the outside world looked like. The thing I appreciated the most is that they, looked at, they didn't look at us like charity cases, but individuals that can make a difference in the world. End quote. I would say that's transformation. Together for Hope is transforming rural America based on our values and priorities that come from what Jesus called the kingdom of God. Now I'm about to start preaching. In the face of Roman imperialism, an empire that put its thumb on Judaism and Palestine and squished them into the ground, Jesus saw another way to be. Another way to exist in the world, a way of life, a way of truth. Jesus would go on to teach his followers to pray stuff like, God, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive our debts, just as we forgive our debtors. This vision of the kingdom of God gives us social imagination. It gives us political imagination. It gives us religious imagination to see another way. Not just pie-in-the-sky utopia that exists in a wish and some kind of projected future that might yet be. This vision gives us an imagination to do what is necessary so that no child goes hungry. No grandparent languishes in a wheelchair that holds them captive in their own house. No college student is so strapped with debt that they can't make enough money when they get started to launch into their own adulthood. No family would have to use credit cards or even worse, payday loans and title loans that would hold them hostage in poverty in perpetuity. This religious, social, political vision of the kingdom of God is a call to action. These are the goals and outcomes of our faith. The kingdom of God is an audacious vision that inspires something powerful, something transformative, something gritty. It inspires hope. And hope demands something different from the status quo. It demands. So much hope that Jesus would be willing to lay down His own life. So much hope that the early followers would sell all of their possessions, put it in a common pot to make sure that everybody in the community had enough. What would that church be? I mean, would we join a church like that? So much hope 
that it brought the Roman Empire to its knees. That hope outlasted the most powerful empire the world had ever known up until that point, but it didn't happen overnight. That hope, it lasted for centuries. It never gave up. Actually, that hope lasted for millennia. Actually, that hope is alive today. That hope, that hope is in our bones. That hope lets us know that the world is not right the way it is. That hope knows that children and senior adults need to be fed. And it lets us know that we can feed them. There's enough food. There's enough food. Even when there's not enough political imagination or political will. The hope of the kingdom of God. It called Ira Neely, Neely out of Helena, West Helena. And it gave him a purpose for his life. The hope of the kingdom of God called together for hope into existence as a way for the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship churches to participate in God's saving grace, truly. The hope of the kingdom of God wakes your staff up every day to plan these worship services. To plan fellowship events for you kids and you. To plan mission trips so that you can participate in the mission of God in this world. And, and it wakes them up to do this in one of the most chaotic times in our lives, both with the pandemic and with the craziest and most dangerous political moment in our lived experiences. Thank you to the staff of this church. I know it's been hard. Thank you. The hope of the kingdom of God, it pulls you out of bed on Sunday morning. And sometimes even on Saturday afternoons, to gather together, to sing songs of joy in the midst of darkness and chaos. It pulls us to pray prayers of thanksgiving even when it would be easier to, whine, to, to have whiny lament. And it lifts our voices up so that justice rolls down like waters in righteousness, like ever-flowing streams. Second Baptist Church, You are the hope of the kingdom of God. You are. You open your arms to a broken world. And you offer God's healing and love to everyone who would enter this place. I know you do. You let me hear. And those who would not dare to come to some Baptist church, not in the South, you bring the love and healing of God Almighty to those outside these doors. You know you do. You are the together and together for hope. And a truly great pastor told me recently that the more together we have, the more hope we have. Thank you, Preston, for that. You are the gritty hope of the kingdom of God, persistent and hard-headed. I'm surprised I didn't hear some amens on that calling for transformation as you let the vision of the kingdom transform you. You make hope a four-letter word. Tough, strong, unrelenting. This hope is personal. It's social. 
it's political, it's religious, and there is absolutely no contradiction between any of those categories. Because the hope of God is all-inclusive. It disrupts the status quo. It calls for something better, more equitable, more equal, more just. And that is the hope of Together for Hope. And you are the together. Your partners in hope as we transform rural America. For all the young Ira Neely's in Helena, West Helena, for all the young Ira Neely's in the Arkansas Delta, for all the young Ira Neely's in the whole Delta region, and for all the young Ira Neely's in the 301 counties of persistent rural poverty in America, let us all press on. Let us push forward. Let us do better with the hope of God. Let this hope drive us until we see and we know that God's will is done on earth even as it is in heaven. May it be so, Second Baptist Church. May it be so. Amen. If you're at home, I invite you to grab your elements, whatever they are, in your kitchen. And if you're here tonight, I would invite you, if you're a deacon, I invite you to take your place. I'm standing in front of a table of stuff that looks like stuff. Stuff that you would buy at a grocery store or Amazon or something else. I don't know. I don't know where this stuff came from. But what I do know is this. It's easy to say words like faith and hope and love and they just sort of flutter in the air ephemerally. And nobody really knows what they mean. But there are times where faith and hope and love take on form. And they make contact with our lives. We can see it. And feel it. And touch it. And see it. I said that already. I think. Taste it. Do you know every other sense is external to us? Except taste. You can't taste a thing until it gets in you and then it becomes part of you. As we come to the table tonight, I don't want you to just think about faith and hope and love. I don't just want you to feel faith, hope, and love. Don't just ponder it or believe it. I want you to taste it. See it. Touch it. Hear it. But taste it. Because we are. On the night Jesus was betrayed, He took bread and He broke it. And He said, this is my body broken for you. And He took the cup and He said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for many. As often as you drink from this cup, remember me. We've got the sanitary packets at each station, so we're safe tonight. I loathe them, and when you open them, it will sound like aluminum foil, and it will sound like normal, yuck, stuff of life. But taste and see, because that's where the holy is too. Let's give thanks. And then our tables are open to one and all.
in the face of all that is, O Lord. We dare to be people of faith and hope and love. To cling to it as they cling to us. Teach us to live in such a way that the rest of the world doesn't have to imagine so much. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, we pray. One God, now and forever, the God of the table. The God who feeds. Amen. Won't you come? stand as we sing this Give it to 
Jason and El Nicole and Keith, we see you and we're grateful for the work that you're doing and we feel like it's our work too. We're in this with you. We thank you all for being with us for the Word and the Word. And that was a Word. It came from right there. That's a Word. Uh, we're grateful for your presence and your work. The next time we will be in this room, it will be Advent. And this room will look different. On Monday at 11... Uh, we are decorating the sanctuary. We're having a hanging of the greens uh, in this room uh, without the service. I uh, would love to have all of the hands in the room available, and we see you online too. We need your hands too. We need muscles to move trees and hands to decorate tables. We need everybody. Many hands make for light work. So if you're free Monday at 11, we would love to have you join us for that. In Advent, we are focusing our attention on joy. We are trying to cultivate joy as a people. And if that doesn't make any sense in this season, we might have a pretty shallow view of what joy is. We're going to try to read a book and have a book club in this season. The book is The Gravity of Joy by Angela Gurrell, which speaks of how we cultivate joy in times of anguish and difficulty. If, if you've yet to purchase that book, we're happy to do that. Just let us know in the office by Monday, or you can purchase that book on your own. We'll meet twice on Zoom in the season of Advent to discuss it. We're also trying to have a devotional on joy, and we welcome any reflections that you might have if you would like to write one. Just get one to Brittany by December 5th, and we will include your devotional in the Advent devotional. would love to have you participate in that. But today is Christ the King Day. Tomorrow is Christ the King Day. Probably Monday too, and Tuesday. And I wonder what it would look like if we lived as if Christ was King. It might looking, look like loving God with everything that we are. All of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it might look like loving our neighbors as ourselves. It might look like this. It might look like all that. It might look like something you never imagined. I don't know. But it would look something like that. So let's go do it. And let's go do it as if it's the most important thing in all the world. Because it is. Peace be with you as you go. We'll see you Monday. Love you people. <laughs>